Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at antimatter. So let's get started. Now, we're still looking at fundamental particles here and we've already seen matter particles. So you've got the six types of leptons and six types of quarks. But we also have these things called antimatter particles as well. And it says here that every fundamental matter particle also has an equivalent antimatter particle. Antimatter particles, also known as antiparticles, have the same mass but opposite charge to their corresponding matter particle. So for example, the antiparticle of the electron is called a positron and has the same mass as an electron, so that would be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, which is on your data sheet, but it's got a charge of plus 1e e rather than minus 1e, e, where e is the magnitude of the charge on the electron. So we're saying that the electron is the matter particle and it's got an antiparticle called the positron, which has the same mass but opposite charge. And it's important to remember that every matter particle will have its own antiparticle with the same mass but opposite charge. And you'll see here we gave the electron the symbol E with a little minus superscript and we gave the positron the symbol E with a plus as the superscript. And that's to show the sign of the charge in the particle. It then says with the exception of the positron, antiparticles are given the same symbol as its corresponding particle but with a bar over the top. For example, the electron neutrino has the symbol nu e, whilst its antiparticle, the anti-electron neutrino, has the symbol nu bar e, where e is used as the subscript, and this Greek letter nu, which is spelled n-u, is sort of just like a curvy v. So whenever we want to write down a symbol for an antiparticle, we need to include a bar above the top of the symbol. It then goes on to say here that when a particle and its antiparticle collide, they annihilate each other and their mass is converted into energy. This production of energy provides evidence for the existence of antimatter. So if you look at the picture here, you can see an example of a positron and an electron colliding. You, and when they do collide, you can see they disappear, but they form two gamma rays, which then move off in different directions. So this annihilation provides evidence that antimatter actually exists. It then says there are far more particles than antiparticles in the universe, so annihilation is extremely rare. And just to help you visualize this example of annihilation, I'll show you a quick simulation. So here you can see we've got an electron on the left and a positron on the right. So that's our matter particle and associated antimatter particle. And if we click play here, you'll see that the two collide with each other and then produce gamma rays. And it says that their mass and any kinetic energy are converted into two gamma rays which go off in opposite directions. And remember, it's this production of energy in the form of gamma rays that provides evidence for antimatter. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.